something there so they can start. All right. Let's start with Uli or lawyer Ulrich Kerner, who is going to talk about a seven-year-old uh, a law that is 12 years old. Well, how the how the law is being implemented, I don't really know, but it applies to me. So I think help. I use Nmap. Stop, 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 stop. I'd like to see the hashtag. If you have questions from the internet, Twitter and IRC and Mastodon, please use these hashtags. And now applause for Uli. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. I'm super happy to be here. I have already ha held a talk three years ago in Hamburg on the Congress. Today we're talking about the hacker paragraph. 202c in the German Strafgesetzbuch. Please, uh, it, the, the subtitle is they do, not, do not post in the wrong forum. That will be explained later. What do I want to talk to about today? First, an introduction where we are right now. Then, the theory of paragraph 202c in lawmaking, in legislation. And then how does how is this happening in reality what is the re what is the relevance of this paragraph and then in the end a little bit uh, outlook and answering questions basically all right when we are talking about Internet legislation. Then we have to talk, to talk about two things. Uh, like first of all, it's still normal in in the juris uh, in the in the legal entity to to use in the legal world to use faxes in justice and everywhere, but also between um, legislators. So in the Bundestag. They start activity, but they always usually miss the mark. So, as an example, for example, uh, about a year ago, someone under the name of Orbit stole data from politicians and prominent people, and they shouted out loud to uh, prevent cyber attacks on politicians. But when you were looking closely, then it turns out there's not a lot of cyber criminality. It's mostly mostly doxing. Most of the data was already available online, and there, ac according to my knowledge, uh, one of the other account was uh, capered. So this you didn't use like high IT technology or skill, but just with the guessing of passwords, who were too easy to guess, and the reaction of the uh, Bundesregierung was that the Secretary Stefan Meyer dec declared that a cyber pre attack prevention centrum would uh, be created. We don't know what um, actually came out of this, but if you Google for cyber attack prevention center, then you find these things from 2014, a report about a secret report of the financial center for the government so the national cyber attack prevention center is they say that this center is not uh, not uh, judgmental because it would be because the only actual thing they could do was the talking about the current situation and give a recommendation so this is all that this center could have could have done so this is what the government is doing to save or to help save our laws. So this is not an easy relation and you can also see this in paragraph 202c. 202c is uh, came into, in, into legislation through the Cybercrime Convention. So I want to talk to you about this process and then uh, 
talk about talk about what the high court the German high court was actually making the constitutional complaint was actually making out of this so the cybercrime convention is a contract between the European uh, Senate and with the goal to have certain standards about bad forms of cyber criminality in the European uh, space and also make easier the the cooperation between the states and a part of this article 6 CCC is the idea that using computer software that is able to help with such crimes is also already a criminal offense. Here's the English text of this. I also have to add that Article 6 has a paragraph 3, which which has a, a rule that says this Article 6, uh, I, we don't want to implement this. So they can, they can review, refuse to implement it, but I was of the opinion that what we find here, devices including um, computer programs, uh, that these c that these can, can be used for all these offenses. Um, that these are written in order to do these, or adapted primarily for the purpose of. Yeah, he's basically translating this into English, so I'm not going to translate it back into in English. Accessing and uh, monitoring. All right, there was a, <laughs> a, a law proposed by the government. It was discussed in a co controversial way. Um, the Bundesrat was very skeptical about, about this and said this, this was going too far. Then the government opposed this. There was a public hearing. And then it was moved into the legal committee. Thank you. And this was recommended to the Bundestag to implement this law, this proposed law. And so what they say is what they want to, the, the goal they want to reach is with the new 202, See, they want to prevent certain dangerous preparation actions to make them criminal. So in order to... Uh, so you can understand this concept when we are talking about offense uh, that is also like preparation actions. I want to talk about this. So, in principle, there is uh, always preparing uh, tasks or preparing measures. The criminal is starting the attempt to commit a crime or a punishable action. And with certain crimes you have the execution and then you have the finalization. An example, if somebody would like to kick someone really, really hard, this alone is not punishable. Now, if that person is wearing really heavy boots, so it's going to hurt, this is still not punishable. This is all still preparation. Uh, this is not yet assault. So it's not punishable by law yet. Once the person kicks the uh, other person, so they're attempting, but they're not. They're, not, they're missing. This is still an attempt, which means that the immediate step now it's starting. This line has been crossed, and I am willing to accept the consequences. And at this point, the attempt is already punishable by law. For example, with the assault. No. If you if you want to kick a car to put a dent into it and the person misses because the car starts, it is an uh, attempt uh, to damage property, but the as attempt is not punishable by law um, because the attempt itself 
uh, is only applicable for um, for laws that carry a minimum sentence of one year. Everything that falls into the preparatory stages is not yet uh, covered by the penal code, so it's not punishable by law. If you go into a shop to buy uh, growing lumps and uh, and uh, water uh, for like uh, irrigation system um, to grow plants, um, this is not yet punishable by law. You need other actions to do that to be punishable. Now, it's in the interest of the legislator to uh, penalize preparatory tasks, preparatory actions under this new paragraph. The in its current form, the hacker paragraph uh, looks like this. If you prepare a crime under 202A or 202B with two preconditions, either if you uh, try to uh, access passwords or other uh, safety measures, or if you use computer programs, they're that have the purpose to uh, execute such a uh, such an act, or if you sell those, if you procure them, if you give them to other people, if you distribute them, or if you make them accessible to anybody else, you can be um, penalized with a prison sentence of up to two years and or a um, financial sentence. Now, uh, this you only understand if you understand both 202A and 202B, so the paragraphs that this is based on. 202A concerns the um, spying of data, so the illegitimate accessing of uh, especially protected files or information. It's also called digital breaking the peace. Um, under the second law of fighting corporate crime, which has been uh, put into uh, into law uh, in the 90s, it has its current state uh, through the 41th change of the penal code of 202A. So we've got the the action uh, to manufacture or distribute programs that can spy data from other people. 202B concerns the um, capturing of data. Now, this is not um, it's not necessary that there are um, uh, special precautions uh, taken to protect the data. It's, uh, the only thing that matters is that there are data that's being transmitted using technical means that um, has been uh, captured. Another small hint, there are uh, other preparatory tasks like this that are um, punishable by law. For example, if you change uh, files, um, if you change files and delete files and the uh, law 202C is applicable accordingly under um, computer sabotage. So if you're interested in this, then have a look at this. So this is, so these other um, paragraphs are mentioned here criminalization of preparatory acts who wouldn't be who wouldn't be um okay back to 202c we are talking about the hacker paragraph the problem here is that computer programs whose purpose is the act of spying or capturing data using those computer pro pro programs is punishable and so we are asking ourselves, what is, what are we supposed to think about this and like how do we categorize this? So the moderation says, I used Nmap, a very capable tool. Am I like already doing something Ill illegal if I have this in my Linux distribution or not? So the law says, demands, that the objective purpose of the program should be uh, the capturing or spying of data. Problem is, programs or objects don't have an objective purpose. Programs and objects have properties. For example, a pistol has a property 
that that it can project a projectile very quickly out of the front and if someone shoots like the fact that someone shoots at a target or a peep or a human is not the purpose of this pistol but instead it is purpose is always given by a person so which has which has properties that can be used for different purposes so in summary it's unclear what falls under this and what does not so according to the government classic or typical hacker tools should fall into this but not programs that can be used for other purposes as well such as uh, so-called so dual-use programs and that means that this objective uh, culpability of this program is very subjective and this has, has to be de determined very subjectively and this is the problem here so this has been subject subject of various constitutional complaints at the uh, constitutional uh, high court but the high court didn't accept these and so these are the IDs so if you want to read off uh, Google these you can find all the information about these so the high court said that these complaints or the people the people who complained are not um, for, uh, do, do not um, hackers themselves, so they they don't have a problem. So the people who complained were was a, a teacher and a, and a university a university who uses many tools and who pro provides these tools to his students, and you can download these tools from his website. For example, the program Nmap. And so he thought he's already culpable just by, by doing this. Then a security company um, CEO who uh, did penetration tests and used hacker software or software from anonymous hacker forums. And I was the third complainant. Complaint so because I thought I use Linux and I have a lot of tools every Linux distribution has a lot of tools like Nmap where I can pretty much be sure that it can be used for criminal purposes I just don't know how, what the purpose w was in the creator's mind of that program and so I feel very threatened by this so the High Court um, needs to know that the people are actually actually hit by this law so if a possible um, if you interpret this in a different way then there is a high risk that you are a culpable so but the high court did not agree they said instead that dual use tools are not do not fall under this law ever they also said the purpose is not nothing objective and not, not a property of the program but describes a uh, purpose of an action and not of the program itself and this is of course very subjective but it has to manifest in a way that can be visible in the creation of the program or in the design of the program however you want to interpret it interpret that or with the uh, with advertisement that shows exact intent to use illegal uh, to use this illegally i i still so think this is very vague what does the literature say of, uh, make out of this if you look at the uh, law literature, so I'm quoting my co-worker Schröder. So programs whose functional purpose is not, not uniquely criminal and only by misusing those you can use them as a tool of, uh, of, of uh, like for example network sniffers. 
So culpability does not apply here, and then reference to various uh, re press releases by the government and other uh, law legal decisions. How does this look in the in reality? It's still very vague. It makes it makes a lot of complications, and so. Apart from this, from this uh, law part, how, how does the how does it look in reality? Now, right now, the paragraph 202C still has a comparatively low um, impact. De Juris is a database for legal decisions, to, and I checked what's actually in there. And I was really surprised that Juris, in the 12 years since this law has been passed, Juris has eight decisions. One of these decisions is the decision of the Constitutional High Court. One decision is the Constitutional Administrative Court. Um, it was about the freedom of the press of a, a mayor. And then we have six civil uh, verdicts from civil courts. For example, the termination of a um, managing director of, um, of a company because of wrongly expensed expenses on his company laptop. There is only one decision from the criminal uh, law. It's a verdict from the, um, uh, from the court in Cologne. This is about the, um, about the verdict uh, about a person that has uh, used these programs. And it's a, um, it's a verdict in a forced, um, forced um, uh, legal, um, legal process, basically. You can, you can force a decision in a legal matter, and the uh, a, a, a state attorney can, uh, can introduce this. Now, if this is not mitigated from the, uh, from the state attorney, then you can go to the court directly and force it to open a, uh, open a legal procedure. Now, the only criminal case is one in which it uh, doesn't really get us much further. Now, what else can we say about this? What's the relevance uh, of, for example, the police statistics from last year, 2018? There is four um, crimes in total which describe the capturing of data and the preparatory actions and then um, data uh, selling in an illegal way. Um, there's four different legal norms that are applicable. Um, just for comparison, for uh, assault, like you know, assault of a person, there's uh, uh, over 150,000. The, the likelihood to become the victim of an assault crime is uh, much disproportionately higher than to become the victim of a um, data monitoring capturing crime. Now, I waited a long time to see if somebody is going to contact me and tell me, hey, I've actually got an uh, investigation based on 202C. And last year I had one case which uh, was terminated this year. And he I would like to present this case uh, briefly here. Um, this is about a software piece called RevCode Web Monitor. Um, the investigating authority was the Central um, Association Cybercrime um, ZCC at the State Attorney's Office in Bamberg. It's a special unit um, or special de department. Um, quite a lot of personnel. We've got four upper state attorneys, four different uh, state attorneys, two in the uh, in the offices, and based on their own understanding on their own website, this Central Association is responsible. Uh, in all of the state of Bavaria for all the uh, elevated uh, crimes in the realm of cybercrime. Now, what was the problem in this case? Uh, one government official had found at hexplatforms.net, he had found a thread which was on a web monitor, which which was offered as a remote administration tool, RAT. And this is from the verdict from the court. Um, 
that this software was uh, was offered in a non-public forum, which is wrong. Um, Hack forums has three million users, according to Wikipedia, and you need to register. Everybody can register if you accept the terms and conditions. And in this case, everybody can look at this thread and read what's been written. Oh, I actually have to go back a couple of slides. So, remote administration tool. Somebody thought, I need to search a bit further and found a blog entry. From my perspective, not a very seriously looking blog. Uh, it's quite, um, you know, uh, big, uh, like strongly worded um, article that this um, software was used in a CEO fraud to produce um, some sort of evidence. And he said that this was malware that looks or you know, that, that uh, camouflages as serious software without producing evidence for this. Uh, he said, is this, is this well programmed? Which programming language was used? Um, based on this, uh, the investigations were started and the Bavarian uh, criminal um, uh, office started this investigation um, with the cybercrime unit of the um, state attorney's office uh, in Bamberg. They bought this software, they put this into their own malware laboratory or what they call the you know, um, investigation or examination of the software. And then they came to the conclusion, I quote, it is not a pure single purpose hacker tool under the sense of 202C of the German criminal code. It is uh, to be checked whether it is a legitimate computer program or a malware program. In its, uh, in its whole existence. Uh, now this already says it is not a pure hacking tool. So that probably means it's probably a dual use tool and according to the Constitutional High Court and many other uh, voices, it means it is not a, um, a tool to commit a crime. And from my perspective, we could have closed the file at this point and just um, focused our attention on another case. Not in this case, though. They found an official website which has a .eu top-level domain. And because of this, the um, Bavarian um, state, um, state police agency, they were of the conviction that the people that were behind the software were going to were obfuscating their identities. Uh, I quote, this is because on this non-public hackforums.net was advertised there. He says it was wrong, it was actually publicly available. The true identity of the, um, of the provider was obfuscated. Um, there is no impressum, like imprint on the website, uh, which might be a, um, a violation of paragraph 5 telemedia law. Um, the domain was officially registered, uh, registered, and they had the mailing address of the person that had uh, registered the domain. The whois entry was complete, but then they saw that the registrar used for this domain was a Russian registrar, which they found very suspicious, even though it was done with the right name and the right address. The hoster was in Ukraine, uh, which probably had made a good offer, um, and according to the Bavarian uh, state police. This was uh, designed to obfuscate the registration. And then they said embedded links to on Facebook and Twitter are leading to non-existent uh, sites. Um, basically, they had the buttons on the website, but they didn't have the registration. So it was just redirecting to the home pages of Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. So all of this reads um, more or less, you know, it goes on like this. So the district attorney uh, uh, asked for a for a warrant for a warrant. Thank you. And so this says the software should is 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 very obviously a malware only used for uh, for some for, for an attacker to control a foreign computer. 
And so they tried. Oh, I have to look at the time. A, a judgmental warrant. We have a huge discussion about this. So um, the public uh, or, or like law, law, law officials are supposed to get passwords and stuff using this, even by even for um, low misdemeanors. And so how does this work? Uh, so the criminal investigator gets a gets a file and can ask for uh, ask for a, um, a warrant. Uh, or, or so they can sign it, or they can say, uh, "I think this is fishy, so I'm activating a control instance," and they can then refuse this act. So this is a, a lot of a lot of work, and so you cannot think badly of our judges that they look at the look look at these uh, warrants like proto warrants and just sign them because it's just easier. So if someone says this is not a pure malware, and so it's automatically du dual use, so it doesn't apply to so two o two c doesn't apply. But if someone tells a judge it's obviously using used for these prop purposes, then I can kind of kind of see why they just signed this. And so on the other other side, we have this huge discussion about um, that pe whether whether people can can release their passwords. Um, and people say like, yeah, but judges control this. You have to say very clearly that this control is a very, very soft control, and you can't take this seriously as a safeguard for the individual citizens' rights. A little bit about warrants. How does this work? How do they enter your house? Uh, they came as civilians with a package underneath their hands. They wanted to talk to the person and who, who didn't come to the door. And there were three people present in the house and asked for a specific person. So after everyone showed their passports and identified themselves, then the policemen actually started wearing their vests so they would be recognizable as policemen. So all the neighbors in this whole village, when they started carrying out everything, what uh, was ha was available, they see they saw immediately that what are these people? Ah, yeah, these are police. Completely unnecessary and left a last and lasting impression in this village. So these are the, the tiny little um, like side effects of these this theater. My clients, uh, my client, everything got got taken away from my client that can be take, taken away. All the computers which he needs f for work, all data storage media, USB cards, USB sticks, uh, hard drives, all mobile phones, lots of um, correspondence like paper correspondence was taken. They also found out which servers the man is using, so 12 servers were seized. Um, All email, um, email was seized, email servers. And then what also happened was, because they, they paid him via PayPal, and his complete data was with pay PayPal, they also um, seized Um, so his financial properties, including his bank accounts, all the cash, and his wristwatch. We have to add, uh, we still have to think about people who are uh, uh, accused as um, the presumption of innocence. Every normal person who doesn't feel solidarity here is ruined. So, you know, you, you, your rent is not paid anymore, the rate for the, your house is not being paid anymore, the mortgage isn't paid anymore, your car payments, every other insurance, uh, everything that's not getting paid anymore, um, your car taxes are not getting paid anymore. Um, 
if you've got a leasing car, this is going to be cancelled immediately. Um, it's the maximum catastrophe. So the um, lower court and the uh, state court have confirmed the seizing of all these assets. Uh, after a long time they said, you know, we're really not sure if these computers actually means to commit a crime, but uh, they are still um, uh, items to be seized. Um, because they might have been procured for uh, illegal purposes. Now, this is about subjectively uh, assessing uh, what the person that was making the software was thinking when they did it, uh, why they were making it and why they were selling it. And this subjective assessment, you need a communication with potential clients or customers or potential um, people of interest uh, that are interested in the software. All this digital communication had been seized, so at this point I am really not in a position to produce any evidence that, um, that um, exonerates me. Um, now they um, produce an, um, an evaluation and in the evaluation they said it was recognizable that person one and person two, the two people that were in the, uh, in the crosshairs of the, um, of the law enforcement agencies, um, it, these were, were not accessible to my client. Now, a year before, in the middle of 2017, somebody had written to say, I'm looking to um, hack certain accounts. Um, is it possible to do that if they don't need to enter the info anymore? If they keylog it, how can I do this? Now, somebody's asking uh, to hack a computer where the passwords are not entered anymore. Um, can I get generate them from inside the system in some way? And my client um, wrote back, sorry, you mentioned that you want to hack accounts. Um, our legal guidelines do not uh, allow us to con continue this correspondence at this point. So this is not our type of business. We don't want this business. And another person, he replied to, or he wrote to a different person, I wonder what some users are thinking when they just you know, tell us this. No, that was pretty pretty nice. So at least to find this in a written report from the um, uh, Land Office of Criminal Investigation that there was no criminal intent. That was a few other things. Um, the final report of the Land Office of Criminal Investigation, LKA, um, it uh, refuted the, uh, the intent to sell for criminal purposes. But they said this was not a pure dual-use tool. So this is a pretty absurd, um, um, absurd uh, alle, alle, uh, accusation or allegation, um, because under the uh, for the federal constitutional court, this is not admissible. This interpretation. There was different conditions for what this device can do. For example, silent installation, which uh, which really troubled them a lot. TeamView also has silent installation. This was apparently not known to them and similar cases. So in the end, it's going to go like this. The police finishes the investigation, uh, hands it over to the state's attorney's office, and the state's attorney's office has um, closed the um, procedure, closed the case after seven months, based on 202 um, uh, letter two. Um, my, um, my client who had really been, been hit hard by this, by this whole case. And this is what a mobile phone looks like once the Land Office of Criminal Investigation has taken control of it and they completely ripped it apart. At the top you can see the chip that had been soldered or somehow uh, removed out of it. And here you can see a hard drive. And as you can tell, this was uh, taken out of its casing and um, there is no potential to put it back in uh, in any way. Um, fitting to the uh, Mountain Office Congress resource exhaustion, uh, apparently they didn't have the capacity anymore to you know, put it back together. Uh, now, this, this whole uh, nightmare was basically over. Um, there is still a um, criminal um, sort of restitution process, which is not yet f finished. I'm really, really short on time. I'm going to get to the finish now. Now, 
uh, one of the questions that people ask themselves that you know use software like this that write software that develop it that test it that in the end say I might be in a legal realm where I think I'm not really uh, I'm not really uh, punishable but the LKA land office of criminal investigation might see it differently like in this case now what are protective measures that, that uh, people can take that are handling software like this now this is, I t mean this seriously, um, do not post into the wrong forums, stay from everything, stay away from everything where an LKA official might think this is only hackers, because hackers is only criminals, even though uh, I think this is really, really absurd. Um, you should only demonstrate legal method means of use and do not um, engage discussion about illegal means to use the same piece of software at all. And uh, also be uh, really cautious um, when you're f uh, so it's not interpreted that because of your warnings or your measures of precaution um, that this should not be used illegally that you might actually be promoting the illegal use of this product. Ulrich, your time is over. We don't have time for Q&A. Thank you so much for your presentation, and I believe that is your applause. Thank you also from the translation team. We have been John Z, YT Chan, and Break the System. Thank you for listening, and see you soon. Anyone has questions, send me an email. I may, might not be able to answer in the full length, but... I might, I might try to answer then, so if, you, if this topic is very interesting to you, or if you fall under this, or if you're un, un, unsure where, who, like for like where you should research this, you can find me on the internet with the name, and do not, do not uh, confuse me with the, sa the other uh, lawyer of the same name from Hanover.